Hey, Wonder Hussy here. Just rode into Oatman, Arizona on my brand new chopper. Just kidding, that's my friend's bike. We're caravanning. My sisters and I are in my car. And my friend is on his bike. But we decided to come here to Oatman, Arizona because we're on our way to the Grand Canyon. And it's more or less on the way. And it's a place I've been wanting to check out for a while. Okay, Oatman is one of those touristy Route 66 Old West towns that actually has a lot of really cool history, but it's basically become a tourist trap. If you can see ahead of us, it's Memorial Day weekend and there's some kind of old time shootout going on in the street. <laughs> so basically it's a souvenir tourist trap town with nothing but souvenir shops and bars and saloons and burger joints and stuff like that but it's surrounded by this amazing mountains and it really does have I mean it's an actual town people live here something like 160 people live here and it has a really interesting history but yeah you can see here it's mostly just like candy shops and souvenir crap and it's a lot of like French and German tourists folks come from all around to see the wild west come alive in Oatman anyway every souvenir that you could ever want is for sale here right T-shirts, whirly gigs, sarsaparilla. Wow, look at all these T-shirts, man. They don't mess around here. Gun control means using both hands. Mm -hmm. When the government says, you don't need a gun, you need a gun. I stand for the flag, I kneel for the cross. Shut up and stand up. Whoa, that's hardcore. Ooh, look at this. A black powder flintlock muzzle loader gun raffle I should enter more stuff for sale oh and look gifts for the classy biker lady oh look here's jackass junction I bet that's a real good souvenir store or I don't know this one might be even better the classy ass <laughs> hey if I ever open a souvenir store that's probably what I should call mine now, Oatman is really popular with two things. Bikers, it's a great place to ride a bike, and wild burros. There's wild burros running around all over town, just going nuts. Okay, these wild burros are everywhere in town. And they're not, when they say wild, they just mean that they're feral. They're not really that wild. They just kind of chill out and hang out in the shade, and they like it if you feed them these pellets of hay. They have these in like every store here. So you just give him one of these, he's happy as a clam, right? <laughs> oh, maybe not. I guess he's had his fill today. Haha, uh -huh, look at this burrow. He's got his head stuck in the store. He probably wants to get in the air conditioning. It is hot today. <laughs> uh oh, look what's going on here. They're wild in the streets in Oatman, Arizona. Gross, man. I can't believe I'm actually shooting this. Ah! Whoa. Sorry about that, right under old glory at that. Yikes. Now, like I was saying, this is a popular destination for bikers, so. A lot of bikers are veterans, so there's a lot of veteran-oriented stuff here. Like Arlington Cemetery, that away. Iraq, Vietnam, Afghanistan. Korea. Oh, even France, wow. The real old timers. But like I was saying, despite all this touristy kitsch, there's actually a lot of really cool history in Oatman. Okay, so part of the interesting history of the town is the name, Oatman. It's named after, you can see on the saloon, Olive Oatman and her sister. There were these famous pioneer women that were kidnapped by Indians as they were on their way west. You know, like how they used to cross the, on the Oregon Trail and stuff in the covered wagons? Well, these two sisters were kidnapped by a band of Native Americans and they were sold into slavery. But they ended up being bought by the Mojave Indian tribe, which was the Indian tribe down here. And the custom of that tribe was to tattoo people's faces. 
Like you can see there on the picture of her, I mean, it was. I think it's a pretty famous uh, historical case. Her and her sister were both uh, sort of adopted by the Mojave Indians, and they tattooed both of their faces like that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see. It's really intense. I mean, talk about traumatic and ruin the rest of your life. Anyways, that didn't even happen anywhere around where we are. They just happened to name the town after them because it was such a well-known story. Look, here's some information about all the burrows in town. Why are there so many burrows? Well, they were remnants of uh, the old burrows that helped the miners back in the day, right? They're descendants, not remnants. They're descendants of the burrows that helped the miners back in the day. So I think starting in like the 1860s, uh, gold was being mined up here, but the biggest vein of gold was discovered in like 1915. It was actually one of the last big mining booms in the country. Can you imagine 1915? That's only 100 years ago, a little over 100 years ago. This was a mining boom town, and the population went all the way up to like 3,500 people in a year. But the boom only lasted about a year, and I think there was a big fire that almost burned down the hotel, and everybody pretty much left once they got all the gold out of the ground. But there's still a lot of mining history here. Like, look, free mine museum. Oh, it looks like there's a mine shaft, a mine tunnel you can go in. Wow, it's like a recreation of an old mine attic. All the old mining hard hats and lights and all the timbers, just like being in a real mine. Kind of interesting though, I mean, having been in some actual mines, this is tourist stuff. <laughs> it's still fun though, because look, it goes on and gets darker and spookier. Oh wow, look, it just goes to a dead end with some natural daylight coming down. Oh wait, is that daylight or is that a light? It's a light, huh? Dead end, well we'll have to turn around and go back out the way we came. It's kind of goofy, but it's a fun little with my friend. It's just a fun little tourist attraction, especially if you have kids, I guess. Or if you don't have the balls to go in a real mine, like me. Oh, hey, speaking of that hotel that burned down, here's a little sign about it. Apparently, it was a pretty big deal, but it burned down in the Great Fire of 1921, and I think that's pretty much when the town more or less started to die out. I mean, I think it hung on for a bit longer, but then when they uh, built I-40 and bypassed Route 66, which Route 66 used to go through this town, or I guess still does, nobody took Route 66 anymore. And this is just another one of those little towns that dried up. Almost. There's still plenty of craziness going on here in Oatman. Okay, wow, as much as I'd love to spend all day here and just get soused in one of these little saloons, I gotta keep going because I'm heading to the Grand Canyon to backpack down to Havasu Falls and we're on a tight schedule. Well, maybe not that tight, but you know what I mean. I'll definitely be back here and poke around some more one of these days.